Hello and welcome to this edition of An English Guy Watching Wrestling. That's me, The English Guy, I'm Nick. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. And today we're going to be reviewing AEW Dynamite from the 19th of January 2021. So, that being said, let's get right into it. Opening match was an eight-man tag match <clears throat> between the Dark Order, which was Colt Cabana, John Silver and Alex Reynolds, Tagging with Hangman Page, who was not officially part of the Dark Order, Dark Order against the Hybrid 2 and Chaos Projects. And <clears throat> one thing that AEW do quite often is they like to have these kind of matches open a show, and it's a really, really good thing to do. And this was no exception. This match was excellent. I thought this was a great match from everyone involved. And <laughs> if you saw my review of AEW Dark earlier in the week, you know that. I told you about Chaos Projects and my love for what they do and how every now and then you'll see <coughs> uh, Luther pick on Serpentico and use Serpentico as a weapon. He didn't just do it with Serpentico in his match, he did it with the Jack Evans and Helico, and I couldn't help but actually find it hilarious. But that aside, <coughs> this was just stunning. And I thought every single person in his match just shined so, so well. And Hangman Page is one of my favourite wrestlers to watch. Because he is just so smooth and so good in the ring. This was no exception. He hasn't been on AEW programming for a while because of the whole thing with the Elite, if you know that story. But so good to see him back and so good to see him do an amazing job. And of course, refuse to join the Dark Order. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Obviously, Dark Order, Hangman Page had a rapport, get along with each other, get along with each other. Dark Order said, do you want to join us? And of course, Hangman Page has said no. But that aside, this was a stunning match. And uh, one thing I will say about this match as well is Silver and Reynolds. One of the best tag teams in AEW, but I really want to see them grow. I think they're going to grow even more in 2021. I think they've been brilliant lately. They were in this match as well. And as I said, this was a superb way to open the time. I thought this match was cracking. So definitely, the eight-man or multi-person tag team matches that AEW seemed to put as an opening match is the right call, and this was a great way to get things going. This was really, really good. Next match was um, Pretty Peter Avalon versus Cody Rhodes. Now, this was a bit of a weird one because Pretty, so Peter Avalon is a guy who is mostly on AEW Dark, and those who know his history in AEW know he doesn't have the best winning streak, but part, of course, of AEW and what they've been doing against Cody Rhodes. Obviously, if you know Cody Rhodes, you know he is as good as they come in the ring. And such a joy to watch. People were thinking, this is going to be a quick match. Definitely wasn't. Really wasn't. But the first thing that happened in the match was Cody Rhodes hitting the crossroads of Peter Avalon. About to pin him. Then Jade Cargill's music hits. She comes out. And by this time, <clears throat> after the distraction by Jade, Peter Avalon has got the uh, chance to recover. It hits a low blow on Cody Rhodes. And of course, that extends the match. Keeps on going, keeps on going. And this match was better than I anticipated, actually. I mean, that's no... Because I was, I was anticipating a short match for this one because of, obviously, Peter not really being used as much in Dynamite as he used to be. But anyway, good ring psychology in this match by Peter Avalon. Going for body parts, but not really sticking to one. But, you know, obviously, after what unfortunate <clears throat> leapfrog by Cody Rhodes, landed awkwardly in his knee, Look like he actually really hurts me, but thankfully, as far as I know, he's okay. And of course, Peter Avalon took advantage of that. And, uh, and the ending to this match was really, really, really funny. Now, Cody Rose has been known to use the figure four leg lock more than once in his career, and didn't. And he put the figure four on Peter Avalon. Now, as I said, Peter Avalon is called Pretty Peter Avalon, and hate's been hit in the face. So, Cody has got Peter up in the figure four. Peter slaps him, and of course Cody goes, no, 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 and he goes to slap him back, and immediately Peter taps out to avoid being slapped in the face. I just thought, because of his character, it, it was so good. And you don't really see that in wrestling. Because of his gimmick, he was really using it at the end of a match. You think, how often do you see that in wrestling? And you don't. And that's the thing I loved about it. And I just thought, that is so good. I couldn't help but absolutely love it. And to see Peter using his gimmick 
more and more and darker. It's been entertaining. But this was just another level. I thought that is how you use a character and really stick to it in a match like that. And, you know, all credit to Peter Avalon for doing that because I did not see that coming. And that's the kind of thing I really liked about it. So, Cody Rhodes picked up the win, the figure four leg lock. Match after that was John Moxley's first match since losing the AEW World Championship to Kenny Omega against Nick Camarato. Now, of course, I've said before, as in my AEW Dark review earlier in the week, that I like, oh, sorry, I like, <laughs> I like Nick Camarato because of how he's starting to show more and more what he can do in this match. So in, in, his, in, in the ring. And in this match, it was no different. Even though it wasn't the longest match, and going into the match, I kind of knew who was going to win because I think John Moxley, it was a shoe in it. He was going to win this match because obviously first match back after losing the belt was to get a, a, sh a chance to get back to winning ways after uh, on a guy who isn't an AEW Dynamite regular. But Nick Camarato showed some pretty cool stuff in this match, to be honest, and I liked it. And the end of the match was, again, a really good way to finish the match. John Moxley has been used been using the power gun shirts off a ceiling the bottom hook DDT. This match, he didn't finish the match with that. He finished it with his sleep hold, which he's done. And the way he did it was great because Camarato, you know, sh shook off a move. I forget which move it is, to be completely honest. But he locks in the sleeper, but he turns slightly to adjust the angle mid sleeper. And that's what won the match. And I thought, again, so, Endings to a match you just don't expect. That was really unique. And the way John Moxley did it was great. You know, he adjusted it, thought, okay, let's put more pressure on it. That did it. And to, to work on a big guy like that was just really, really good work rate and thinking from both men. I'm not too sure <clears throat> if Nick Camarasso's beard and hair was almost to completely disappear <laughs> under John Moxley's arms, but it really did it. That just shows you, you know, how much the pressure was applied. But I said, really good ending to a short match. But again, John Moxley, I, that's right, I love him. And who doesn't these days? He's like the man to watch in AW. Nick Camarato, again, is starting to show the cracks of starting to rise and rise. And again, we've got some good offense in this match. So again, short match, but really entertaining. Match number four was my match of the night. Well, I will say match of the night, probably my joint match of the night. Because... I'll get to the other match tonight in a bit. This was Matt Seidel teaming with Top Flight versus Matt Hardy and Private Party. On paper, I saw this match announced and I thought, okay, yeah, this is a match I want to see. Because of all six men involved, I mean, Matt Hardy and Matt Seidel are the veterans of their respective teams against perhaps the two most athletic tag teams in AEW, Private Party, and top flight. And this match was just stunning, beyond a doubt, from start to finish. And as I said earlier in the week, Money Matt Hardy is a heel managing a private party at face tag team. Not so much anymore. Private party won the match after a chair shot <clears throat> to the ribs of one of top flight. I think it was Darius. And of course, Mark Quinn was like, wait, what? And as I Cassidy smiled as he hit him with a chair. And of course, you know, Mark Quinn thought, okay. And then hit the shooting star press and pinned him. One, two, three. And then, but after the match, a little smile came in his face. I thought, okay, yeah, they're adapted to the Matt Hardy thinking of ways. And obviously, being a heel. But this was just great from all six men. I love the. Matt Hardy hitting three side effects in a row on all of his opponents. That was just, I didn't expect to see that. <clears throat> see, you expect that. I liked it. I thought, that's great. And as you'd expect, Private Party and Top Flight just worked and gelled so well together. You know, two insanely talented tag teams. They're going to click. They did. And I really want to see a match just between those two teams in the future. Hopefully, it'll happen. Fingers crossed because. That match has got star quality written over it. And that will be one to watch for absolutely sure. But this was a phenomenal match. I thought this was easy, one of the best six man tag matches in terms of you know a heel tag team that were once faced but really slowly starting to get to it.
but you know, starting to come right, come to the way of thinking about Hardy against Matt Seidel, one of my favourite wrestlers over the last ten years, maybe actually felt like more than that, fifteen years I would say, and against you know top flight as I said, who are one of my favourite tag teams, if not my favourite tag team to watch right now. They are just indescribable. If you've ever seen their matches, you will know why. As in 2021, I think it's going to be a big year for them, and they just seem to get better and better. So this match was great. Definitely, definitely worth watching. So, ah, yeah, I didn't want to go. Next match was the only women's match on the card. It was Penelope Ford versus Layla Hirsch. Now, I've seen Layla Hirsch wrestle many times. Only 4 foot 11, but, yeah, she could wrestle. She's obviously a former um, amateur wrestler. Great background. Only been professional, I think, two years. You would never guess it. She looks like she belongs in her ring. And Penelope Ford, I'm not, I'm not, I won't lie, I'm not too sure how long she has been wrestling, but of course, she belongs in her ring too. And this was a very good match too. I thought this was two women wrestlers showing really good wrestling from later. And even from Penelope, and of course, athleticism is second to none. And she used that in this match too. And this was something I did not expect because I thought this was going to be a short match. I kind of knew who was going to win, but it kept me guessing to the very end because of the way these two women worked. And I, that's all credit to both of them. And legit, Leila Hirsch was, it was probably her best, if not her best, sorry, one of her, if not her best performers in AEW to date. Superb match. And she proved she, hopefully, will get more appearances in AEW, but if she gets signed, then it's a huge, Cool for AEW because she can work with anyone. I've seen her wrestle in person once when she was in the UK, but I've seen her wrestle before. She's wrestled in, the sure, first time I ever saw her wrestle was in WXW, memory says correctly, and I thought, wow, she's good. And when I saw her in for the first time in live in person at Pro Wrestling Eve, I thought, yep, she's awesome. And she's been like that on AEW since the time she's been there. And she's great. Penelope Ford, again, such a good heel. The ending to this match was what people got me thinking that was great. Leila Hirsch almost pinned Penelope Ford, but Penelope got over and got, got to a pin. Had a foot on the ropes. The referee didn't see it, but he held that foot in place so she couldn't kick out. That's what it looked like on camera anyway. And I thought, wow, that's great. But of course, the referee decision stands. And I thought, wow, that's just so good. I might be wrong on the foot on the rope, but there was something on the foot on the rope. I apologize, I don't remember 100%. But still, it was a great ending to a very, very, very good match. And worth, worth watching. The only women's match on the card, but what a match. Really, really enjoyed this one. And the main event was second uh, co-match <laughs> co of the night. The most unusual... A uh, three-way tag match I've ever seen in AEW. All members, apart from one, of the inner circle. And the winning team was going to be the team that's going to go on and on to challenge for the tag team titles. It was Santana and Ortiz against Chris Jericho and MJF against Sammy Guevara and Jake Hager, or Sammy Hager as they've been called. Of course, if you know who Van Halen are, you get the reference, and I can't help but thought such a fantastic comparison. But the most unusual tag match I think I've ever seen in AEW, but no less, this was absolutely superb. And they weren't obviously all members of the inner circle. You think a bit of holding back a bit of camaraderie? No, they went and had a match of all against each other, and this was absolutely superb. I thought this was all six men. Not holding back, even though they're part of the same faction, just going out there and just show what people what they can do. And all six men were superb to watch. And I can't help but feel this is a match you may never see again. And if you never see it again, you know, watch this one because it was really, really entertaining. And yeah, you know, Sammy Guevara and the thing with him and Jeff, it's just so entertaining to watch in a circle. But this was. A great, great match. And I thought, such a good main event. And I won't lie to you, I wasn't expecting this to be in the main event. I wasn't too sure what the main event would have been in this, in this broadcast. 
But that was the right call for the main event because all six men really shine brightly. And a tag match that is so unusual but so good and kind of a good way of thinking to go forward with MJF and Chris Jericho picking up the win. Of course, it used to be Sam Guevara teaming with Chris Jericho, La Sex Gods. That's MJF. And of course, that creates the rift a little bit more between him and Sammy. And of course, Sammy now ta- tagging with um, Jake Hager. I think that's going to happen more and more, the whole Sammy Hager thing, because it is, it is funny. But it's just very unique to watch, but also very interesting. And I really am enjoying what Inner Circle are doing. And that topped off <clears throat> a very, very good episode of Dynamite this week. And seriously, as I said, you know, not too long ago to a friend of mine, AEW haven't really done a bad show this year. They've really been doing some great stuff and, and continued with this week's, week's episode of Dynamite. And uh, hopefully next week is going to be the same. And some matches made for the upcoming pay-per-view. I think it's a pay-per-view, sure it is. And um, we're going to get into that next week because obviously only a couple of matches have been made. Thunder Rosa, we're finally facing Britt Baker. And in the main event, I think it's the main event, it's Kenny Omega tagging with the Good Brothers. This is Kenny Omega, so Pac, Ray Phoenix, and John Moxley. Um, Penta is not in the match because during the show, Good Brothers and Kenny Omega beat on Penta and put him out of commission. So then, but obviously part of the storyline, put him out of commission. That's going to be a great, great six-man tag match. But all things point to the next show, and it's going to be next week on Dynamite. I'm looking forward to it. So. That's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Until then, take care, everyone.